Hello, and welcome to how to create a super simple bootloader part 4. I'm Bruno, and I'll be your host for this video. This time we're going to focus on developing the application code. So we're going to basically use the same content that we had created on the previous video of the bootloader as a getting started point. If we recall, the message that appeared was showing that the bootloader was started, but there was no app installed. So a very simple way to create your application is to use Ctrl C plus Ctrl V and copy and paste from the bootloader and then apply a few changes to make the application work as we expected by adding prints here and there and also changing the linker script so we can locate the flash position that the application is going to be running from. All right, so let's get into the code itself. So uh, here we can see the bootloader. I'm pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V, changing the project name to application. And once that is done, the copy will be made. One thing that is very important to detail is that the IOC file, the one that used to create the first project, will keep the same name as bootloader. And we need to tie those two together by changing the name, meeting the same as the workspace itself. All right, so now that we have the code, I'm just going to start cleaning everything, starting from the main.c file. So here on our code, we are going to scroll down to the parts that we have to first remove in order to make the application works. So the first one that I'll remove is the go to app and some others such as the blink function that we won't be using on the application at this point in time. All right, um, we can also clean here the prototypes for those functions to avoid the warnings on the code. And finally, we can go down to the main loop and instead of using the go to app, we can actually go and replace it with a print app just so we know that we are running the application. So right now it's going to be a very simple print just saying, hey, the app is running. Now this should do the trick for the application side of things in terms of code execution, but we also need to change the linker script. So I'm going to enter on the .led file and make sure that the flash region is on the same position that I want it to be. So I'll just change here to A and also keep the, the length to 64K instead of 32. So I can use a larger portion of the flash for the application. And the last thing is actually tell the application that the interrupt vector should be uh, with a, an offset that meets the very first position of the flash. So as we can remember from this linker script, we added 8000 as the position, so those two are all set since they have the same position. Now I can build the application and enter in debug mode as the usual method, but instead I'm going to use the bootloader as the entry point. So I'll tie those two binaries on the same debug session. And here down below we can actually see that the ELF for the application does come with the three memory regions that we specified. So now I'll just click on the bootloader project to enter in the debug session. But since we copied it for the first time, we're going to see two bootloaders. And that's not desirable. So I'm going to have to delete one and just use the other one. All right, so by entering the debug configuration, I can simply delete any one of those. They are a copy of each other. And once this is deleted, I can configure the proper one. So to, to do that, we can again enter into the debug configuration. But this time we can actually go to the startup tab and through there we can add a different ELF. So I can decide if I want to load two or more ELFs at the same time. I'm selecting the application project over the debug one and just hitting OK. So we're going to see that both are going to be presented and one is the main and the other one is just part of the entire debug session, which is nice because we're going to enter through the bootloader and whenever that jumps into the application, we can see and debug the code from the application as well, as long as the two projects are on the same workspace, which is a very nice feature from the Cube IDE. So as we can see, I just entered in debug mode from the bootloader. Uh, here, there's no surprise. I'm just going to enable the console so we can see the serial port and we can see that there's some messages from the previous session that we were exploring on the third video. Let's just ignore for the time being. And one thing that's very interesting to do on, before starting the debug session 
uh, in the code execution is actually to go to show view and then go into the memory region just to prove that the application was actually loaded on this process by using the combination of the two binaries. So by typing the first address of the application itself, we can see that there are some code and I'm just scrolling down back and forth on the memory region. So we know it's not blank. And now finally, let's do the code execution and also show on the console um, because we do expect to see the message from the bootloader and then finally go into the app running. So there we have it, the boot start, app start, and the app running on the cycle. And a very interesting thing is that if we do pause here, we can see that the code was executing from this main, but this is not the main from the bootloader itself. This is the main from our application. And since both projects are combined into the same workspace, we can actually check uh, both codes at the same time with this methodology, which is quite nice for the cube ID. All right, I think this concludes the steps that I wanted to cover during this video. Thanks for watching up until this point. I do hope to see you guys on the fifth video. And again, please check our wiki page for more content and also our GitHub. And as always, have a wonderful day. Thank you guys.